Welcome to Computer Concepts and Applications, CSIS 100, Neosho County Community College. In Chapter 13, we're working with creating a table, form, and report using Microsoft Access 2013. Creating a new database involves carefully planning the tables and other objects that will be needed by the individuals who will use the database. All of the data that needs to be collected and stored are gathered and analyzed for the best possible way to define the group of elements into logical units. In Chapter 12, we examined existing database and added and edited data in a table and form. We also created a query. Now, we'll be learning how to create a brand new database, a new table, assign a primary key, and modify field properties. In your book, on page 390, creating a new database file and understanding table design guidelines is the first step in the process of creating a database. Look at the table on page 390. Review the guidelines for planning a new table. Once reviewed, start Microsoft Access and select File and create a new blank database. Give your database the name of used books with your last name at the end. Make sure to choose the folder to save it to your specific location of your student data files. Select Create. Access creates the database file and opens a new table data sheet named Table 1 in the work area. You can create a new table using the blank data sheet. Leave the blank table data sheet open for the next topic. Each table in a database should contain information about one subject only. In this chapter, you will create tables for a used textbook database that a student organization may use to keep track of students, textbooks, and sales. The three tables you will create in this chapter are books, sales, and students. Creating a new table is described on page 392 of your textbook. With the used books database open and with the blank data sheet for table 1 open, Tap or click the Date Time button in the Add and Delete group of the Table Tools field. Choosing the most appropriate data type for a field is important for sorting, calculating, and verifying data. Type Sale Date. And then, tap or press Enter. The Click to Add column opens the data type drop-down list for the next new field. Add a new field using either the Click to Add or the buttons in the Add and Delete group of the Table Tools field. Tap or click the short text in the Click to Add drop-down box. Type Book ID. Press Enter. Let's choose Currency for the next field, and the field name will be called Amount. Tap or press Enter. The next field will be a short text field, and it will contain the, the value of Pay Method. Tap or click the Sell Date to select the field. Tap or click the Name and Caption button of the Properties group. The caption property is used to type a descriptive title for a field that includes spaces between words or the full text of an abbreviated field name. For the caption text box, type sale date and then select OK. Tap or click to select the amount field and choose the caption box again. For the caption, type Sell Amount and choose OK. 
Notice you will not be able to see the full text in the column cell amount. So click in between the columns and drag to the right to make the column wider. Tap or click to select the pay method field. Choosing the name and caption dialog box, give this a caption of payment method. Select OK. Double clicking between the columns will best fit the contents in the cell. Click the Save button in the Quick Access Toolbar and save your table as sales. On page 394, creating a new table in Design View and assigning a primary key must be reviewed. In the previous topic, the sales table was created in a datasheet view and Access automatically created the ID field and designated it as the primary key. In Design View, the ID field is not created for you. Recall that a primary key is a field that uniquely identifies each record in the table. To create a new table, we'll select the Create button from the top, and then select Table Design. With the insertion point positioned in the first row of the field name column, type Student ID. Then press Enter. For the data type, we'll select Short Text. To move past the description, press Tab key to go to the next field. Continue typing in all of the fields found on the bottom of page 394. Tap or click to place the insertion point within the student ID field name. The student ID will be the primary key as it is a unique identifier for every record. Then select primary key from the top. Notice a gold key is placed to the left hand side of student ID designating that it is the unique identifier for all records. Click the Save button on the Quick Access Toolbar and save the table as Students. Close the Students table. Under the Create tab, select the Table Design button. The third table that we'll be creating will be called Books. The fields are found on page 395. Take a moment and enter all of the fields requested. The book ID field will be the primary key for this table. Save this table as books. Close the books table and leave the database open for the next topic. On page 396, Adding fields to an existing table is the next topic in Chapter 13. Open a table in Datasheet view and click to use Click to Add column to add new fields or make active a field in the datasheet and use the buttons in the Table Tool Fields tab. With the Use Books database open, open the Books table. Tap or click to add a column. Then select Currency from the drop-down list. The field that <clears throat> we'll be entering is called Stop Price. Press Enter. Tap or click the top part of the View button in the Views group of the Table Tools field. This will switch to Design View. In the Description column of the Stop Price, Type in the text, do not sell for lower than the student's stop price value. Save and close the books table. Open the students table. In the students table, tap or click to select the phone field. In the table tools field tab, Tap or click the Yes No button in the Add and Delete group. Type Direct Deposit.
after typing direct deposit, be sure that you can see all of the text by doing a best fit. Save and close the student table. Open the books table. Tap or click to select the stop price field. Look at the message that displays in the status bar. Notice that the text typed in the description column for the field and design view at step 5 displays here. Description entries also display in the status bar when a form is open that is based upon the same table. Close the books table and leave the database open for the next topic. With the database still open, locate the students table and right click. Select design view. This opens the table immediately in the design view. Tap or click in the state or provenance area. At the bottom, under properties, look for the area called default value. Put your cursor in the default value and type in MI. Also, for the field size, we're going to be reducing it from 255 characters to 2. Tap or click in the caption property box and type state or province. Tap or click in the student ID field name to select it. In the caption box, type student ID and press enter. Add the following caption properties by completing the same steps. On page 399 of your textbooks, it gives you the captions for each of the fields. Take a moment and add each of the captions assigned. Save your table. Tap or click the top part of the view button to go to the data sheet view. Double tap or double click the right column boundary of the column headings to best fit. This enables all of the headings to be able to be seen. Notice that MI appears in the State or Province column by default. Type your name and a fictitious ID number. Also, create a fictitious address in the new record in the data sheet. Select direct deposit and then create a fictitious email. When done, save your table and close out of the table. With the database still open, press or hold the right click the books table and then choose design. In the books table, tap or click in the condition field to select the field. Then 
click the data type list arrow and then select the lookup wizard. A lookup wizard assists with creating lookup list field properties. For the lookup wizard, we'll type in the values that we want. Select next. In column one, we'll be typing in the following. Excellent, like new. On the next row, very good, minor wear to cover. On row three, we will not put, <coughs> oh, excuse me, we will put uh, two more entries. Good, markings on cover. And on the fourth row, acceptable markings and pages. When completed, select Next. Since the label has already been identified for us, we'll choose Finish. At the bottom on the properties, notice that there is a lookup tab. Under the lookup tab, you'll see the resources that are provided. Save the table and switch to data sheet view. Create the following record on page 401, giving the book ID of DJ slash hyphen one. Student ID, the title of the book, the author, then selecting the drop down menu for condition, you'll notice the uh, four elements that we just created. Double click on the outside edge in order to see them all. The condition of this book is good. The asking price is $15. The stop price is 10. Save the table and close the table. You can also close the database. Beginning on page 402, we'll now work with displaying and editing a relationship. A relationship allows you to create queries, forms, or reports with fields from two tables. Relationships prevent duplication of data because an ID, name, or title of a book can be looked up in one table rather than repeating the field in other tables. Open the database named Used Books from the Chapter 13 folder in the Student Data Files, or you can download the file from Inside NC under this assignment area. Please take a moment and locate the file. After opening the file, please be sure to save it as a copy with your last name at the end. Save it to a location of your choice or to your student data files. After saving the data face, remember to enable the content at the top. That way, you can work in the database. This file is similar to the database we have been working on in this chapter, but the books table has been modified. There are additional lookup lists. There's 10 records added to each table. Open the books table, review the data sheet, and then close it out. Do the same thing with the sales and the student data table. Close out all tables except the student table. For the student's table, change Doe in the last record to your name. Tap or click in the Database Tools tab and then select the Relationships button. 
A field list box for each table is located in the Relationships window. A black join line connecting two table field list boxes indicates a relationship. Observe that each line connects a common field name. Tap or click to select the black join line that connects the books table field list box to the cells table. When you select the join line, it will become darker. Then, select Edit Relationships at the top left. When editing the relationship, you'll see that a one-to-one -one is shown in the Relation Type section. A one-to-one -one relationship means that the two tables are joined on the primary key in each table. Tap or click to insert a check mark in the Enforce Referential Integrity checkbox. On page 403 of your textbook, turning on the Enforce Referential Integrity means that a record in books is entered first before a record with a matching book ID is entered in sales. Select OK. Tap or click to select the black join line that connects the books table to the students table. Then select the Edit Relationships button. Tap or click to insert a check mark in the same Enforce Referential Integrity uh, checkbox as we've done before and select OK. A one to many relationship occurs when the common field used to join the two tables in the primary key in only one table, the primary table. One student can have many textbooks for sale. In this instance, a record must first be entered into students, the primary table, before a record with a matching student ID can be entered into books, the related table. Notice the error that's received when trying to create a relationship. The error is telling me that the students table is already open. I'll try the join type again. When completed, select the close button to close out of the relationships dialog box. On page 404 of your textbook, we'll now work with creating and editing a form. The forms group of the create tab includes buttons to create forms ranging from a tool to create a simple form that adds all of the fields in the selected table to tools for more complex forms that work with multiple tables. Once created, a form can then be modified. With the Use Books database open, select the Books table name in the Navigation pane if Books is already not selected. Then select the Create tab. Under the Create tab, we'll select the Form button. A form is created with all of the fields in the selected table arranged in a vertical layout and displayed in Layout View. Layout View is the view in which you edit a form structure and appearance using buttons in the Form Layout Tools tabs. Tap or click the Form Layout Tools Design tab. Then, select the Themes button in the Themes group. Tap or click Slice, the last option in the second row. Tap or click the Logo button in the Header Footer group. For the logo, we'll be inserting a picture. The picture can be found on your student data files or in this assignment area. Look in Chapter 13 of the student data files. Then, locate the image called Textbooks. A picture is inserted into the selected logo control object near the top left of the form. With the logo control object still selected, click on the Property Sheet button in the Tools group. Once the Property group opens, locate the Size Mode Property text box area. Instead of a clip, we'll be using the drop-down menu and then select Zoom. 
select the current value in the Width Property text box and change it to 1.75. For the height, 1.25. The logo is now larger and more visibly seen. Close the property sheet. An orange border around the control object indicates that the object is selected. Tap or click the Form Layout Tools Format tab. Then select the Font Size button arrow and select 48 from the drop-down. But first, select the book's title. Tap or click the Save button on the Quick Access Toolbar. Make sure to save the default name as Books. Close the Books form. Double tap or double click the Books form in the Navigation pane to reopen it. Scroll through a few records. Once done, leave the database open, but close out of the form. On page 406, we're now ready to view, edit, and create a report. A report is a, created using techniques similar to those used to create the form. With the database still open, select the sales table. Then, select Create from the top, and then we're going to select the report. A report is created with all of the fields in the sales table arranged in a tabular layout. Tap or click the logo button in the header footer area. Then, we'll be searching for the file called Textbooks again. By default, Chapter 13 should still be available. Once you select the textbooks, select OK. On the property sheet, change the properties to the same properties as previously. The width is 1.75 and the height is 1.25. Also, change the title of sales to size 48. Tap or click to select the current date control object near the top right of the report. Slide or drag the right border of the control object left until the control ends just left of the vertical dashed line that extracts to the report. The vertical dashed line indicates a page break. Resize the control object so that all objects on the left will fit on the page. Select page 1 of 1 of the control object and resize it, as well as the dollar amount at the bottom. Then, select the Print Preview button near the right end of the status bar. Under Print Preview, you can see how the report would be viewed. The last element on page 408 is how to compact, repair, and back up a database. Go ahead and close out of Print Preview and out of the two tables and forms. Make sure to save. With the database open, select the File tab. From the File tab, you can select the Compact and Repair Database button. This helps prevent and correct database file problems by using this feature. The Compact and Repair takes a few seconds to review. 
Once it's completed, select the File menu again and then select Options. Under Options, tap or click the current database. Then, select a check mark in Compact on Close. This way, the file will become a smaller file size and you'll be able to upload it to Inside NC. Select OK. Tap or click OK at the message box that says the database must be closed and reopened for the option to take effect. Tap or click the File tab and choose Save As. Selecting Save As will then allow you to choose to back up a database. Then select Save As. Notice how your last name will appear as well as the date of your the backup. Select Save. You can now close out of the database. This concludes the Microsoft Access Unit. Thank you for joining me for Chapter 13 and good luck integrating Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Access together.